Hello and welcome to my channel. Today's video is a little special. First off, thank you to 1000 views on World's Review. Thanks for all your support and to those who purchased him on Cults 3D. While I'm looking back at World as a project, going through the assembling process, I'm also going to talk about, in my opinion, if you should use resin printers to print your own transformer toys. I'm going to talk over the footage of me assembling my second well, and will have the parts I'm holding in my hand shown on the corner of the frame. Whenever an interesting process comes up in the video, I'll talk about it. I decided to print my well at the smaller 90% scale because when I designed well back in July, I had a bunch of M2 screws left over from back when I used to scratch build my own transformers with styrene sheets over one summer break two years ago. So I designed the pinholes to have the diameter of 2mm, but when I got back to the UK I wanted to move on to using nails as pins, because nails don't have threads on them like screws do, meaning it wouldn't rough up the resin walls when inserting or simply when moving the joint. From my experience, this causes the walls and the overall piece to be more brittle and will become looser and looser over time. You can of course tighten it if it was a screw, but again you risk causing the piece to snap. Since I've switched to nails, I've not had that problem at all, and the diameter of my nails at the moment are 1.8mm, hence why I've shrunk it from 2mm to 1.8mm at a 90% scale. If you're keeping up with a video on screen, you'll see that I've already assembled the head and the cockpit area of Whirl. You'll also see the tools I deem necessary when assembling a resin transformer. One of the benefits of using resin is that the material is very easy to smooth and sand, way easier than plastic that comes out of a FDM printer. Sometimes supports are so close to the resin walls that they stick to it when printing, or when you remove your supports you'll see some little dots or marks from where the supports were. With resin this is so easy to sand away for a smoother piece. A metal file would go a long way and does wonders in doing that. Of course sandpaper works as well. Remember to do this in a well ventilated area as apparently the powder coming from the resin is harmful. So are the fumes that emit from the resin. You'll need a hobby knife to help clean up the pegs before attaching them to one another for a sturdy and firm connection. The last thing you'll need when assembling is a pair of pliers. This gives you a good grip of the pin when inserting. I recommend inserting at a rotating motion, slowly drilling it in while gently applying some force to the tool in your hand. Slowly, the nail should come out of the other side and you'll have a hinge done. An indication that the nail is actually going through is on the other end of the hole. Some resin tends to come out and that means that your nail is pushing and clearing the path, making its way to the other side. I tend to snip it to size with the same pair of pliers and sand the nail with my metal files so it doesn't stab me when I handle it afterwards. Now that I've established the quote unquote rules to assembling your resin transformer, I'd like to take some of your time to talk about the material itself and how I got myself into this trouble. When I wanted to buy a 3D printer, I only started 3D modeling for a week. I've designed the More Than Meets the Eye Lost Light ship and also started on a live action More Than Meets the Hieronymus design. I thought to myself it'd be a good time to buy a printer so that I could hold my designs in hand and play with them. Um, which was the purpose of learning how to 3D model because prior to that I had styrene sheets and only done some custom paint work. I've been custom painting since I was 11 with markers and then moved on. Now I'm 20. It's been a long time coming. So I looked into 3D printers and the major turnoff immediately was the layer lines from the FDM printers. So I looked at ways to get rid of them. This introduced me to resin printers, especially the Anycubic Photon S in particular, which was new at the time so once I've looked it up the Google cookies kicked in and I've been offered ads and ads and ads about this Photon S printer and apparently these cookies actually worked for once. Resin printers do get rid of most layer lines and with only that piece of research I went and got myself a resin printer. The videos I looked at talked about using resin printers for miniatures but not transformers, in fact there weren't a lot of videos on 3D printed transformers, filament or resin. The only sort of inspiration I had was Sam's Forge's toys at the time. Then I thought, yep, I'm going to make my own toys without any prior 3D modelling experience. 
I've only had experience on Photoshop, so with the new medium of resin, I really, really started off at the deep end. The first thing I noticed with my first prints was mushroom pegs are a no-go. There was absolutely no give to the pieces and joints. Mushroom pegs and ball joints require the socket to be slightly flexible and very, very solid to accept the joints itself and to hold up and maintain the articulation. The resin I got was the Anycubic resin. It printed my Rodimus head very, very nicely. No ley lines at all. And the supports were very easy to get rid of with just some modeling pliers. The Anycubic Photon S also comes with a plastic scraper for you to get the prints off the print bed. This wasn't the most useful tool as I soon transitioned into using a metal one. I still use it to this day and it's a paint scraper. It works wonders and is so much better than that plastic one which bent after a while. Back to the resin. So I learnt that there is no way you could use ball joints and mushroom pegs. Joints I have seen being used on filament transformers so this really came as a shock. There are more flexible resins, perhaps an ABS mix, but those are still quite brittle, according to some research I found. Another thing I learned was that you can't have a thin piece, it won't hold up at all. Once you've even touched it with a pin, it snaps so your walls need to be thick, or just thick enough. For rotation joints, I soon learned to use universal joints to replace ball joints. This comes at a massive disadvantage because it takes up a lot more space on the figure than just a simple ball and socket joint. So the only advantage resin has over filament when it comes to building a transforming articulated transformer is that there are no layer lines. That to this day is the only thing I could think of as an advantage over the FDM printers. And in hindsight, I should have bought an FDM printer in the first place, and I really still want one, to build more intricate transformations in pieces. But I learnt to design transformers for the resin printer I have, and have learnt to love the material and the products it produced. I still do warn against it though. And with this out of the way, let's take a look at Whirl, fully assembled. So at the time of this recording, it's been two weeks since I've printed Whirl, and I left him to cure, let, let his pieces be more solid, before I did this short, short review, um, just to look at how the joints hold up, how everything holds up as well, and see if what I said previously corresponds to what I said now. So the joints still hold up very, very nicely. They do hold a pose. And like I mentioned before, this is how you attach a rotation joint is. It's very similar to the weaponizers now in the Siege line or the fossilizers in the Kingdom line. This is how you sort of attach them um, by pegs, not ball joints and not mushroom pegs, which are what I actually prefer in toys. Looking back at it, I really wish I added elbow swivels and ankle rockers that would improve the figure so much. This is what I did instead of a ball joint when it comes to Will's head. So I put a hinge inside Will's neck so he can look up and down and a rotation joint at the bottom of his neck so he can look left and right. So all of this could be replaced with one single ball and socket joint. With that, I actually lose a bit of head tilt as well, which I actually want in Will because he's such an expressive character. This is my most recent project, um, Little Cub Cheetor. Uh, my first go into organic sculpting and I think it's going pretty well so far. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about universal joints. Look at his shoulders, there are actually four pieces that make up one arm. So it's just a multitude of joints, um, there's a multitude of hinges and pegs to add up to that and you can see that it is kind of bulky and all of this could be avoided by one single ball joint. But I still do really like him and he's really cute and I can't wait to finish him. What I find resin is best for is these G1 designs. That is why lately I've been doing so many of them, is because they don't require ball joints, they only need, they only need hinges and tabs, and that is where I think the material really, really strives. And I really enjoy doing these G1 toys. They're really colorful when I paint them. Um, please rem remember to prime your pieces before, or the paint is not likely to stick as well. To stick as well. And another thing that this material strives for and works really well for as well are these conversion kits. So I've got one with Titan Return Rodimus to Modern Meets the Rodimus and one 
uh, this ravage is actually a siege ravage that I've put a new head and new arms to and an articulated tail and these because they are static pieces are more similar to this nature of miniature in terms of that they don't really need to move and that this is where the material strives. Here is well next to my favourite G1 project and my most recent project. These three projects I am really proud of at the moment and I'd like to end it with a still frame of these three together. I really hope this video has been informative and has helped you in terms of research in looking for a 3D printer to get because FDM or resin you'll need to get enough research and I hope this is good for you. Um, especially if you want to do it in the, for the purposes of transformers, which I think if you're watching this channel, this is what you want to do. All my resin transformers hold up very well so far. They are actually designed for resin, so I think they will hold up for you as well. Thank you all for watching this long, long video, and I hope this really helps. I really appreciate you. Please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helped me out. And have a good day, stay safe, and goodbye.